everyone the most difficult property in css is the box sizing property so to explain the box sizing property i have an example here you often see this property used in css resets so for example you're gonna see this quite often where you select all elements and then um, you're gonna remove for example the margin right margin zero padding zero and then we usually have a box sizing reset. So you have two options here. The default is actually called content box. And this often gets changed in the reset here to border box, right? So those are the two options that you have for box sizing. Now, very few developers actually understand this though. So let's actually learn and uh, see what it does. So let me remove this. So to explain this, I have two boxes here, right? So just box one and box two and I've given them a width and height, same height and width, right? And that's what this looks like on the page, right? Just two boxes. Now, what you need to know is that every HTML element has a so-called box model, which we can actually see if we inspect this. So here we have our HTML, right? If I select this first box, I can scroll down here in the Styles tab. I can scroll down and eventually you're going to see this illustration. And this is basically the box model of this particular HTML element, right? So here we can see that there are actually several boxes. So here in the center, we have what we call the actual content box. This is the actual content of this element. And around there, you can have padding, right? We don't have any right now, but if we would have padding, well, that would be uh, the padding box. And around the padding, there is a border or border box, right? So there's like several boxes here. Around the border, we have margin, although margin is not really considered to be part of the element itself. Margin is more about uh, space between elements, right? So that's for box one and box two has the same, right? Box two also has a box model, right? Where we have the content, the padding, border and margin. All right, when we set a width, for example, what the, the width of what exactly? Like if I set a width of, let's say, 700 pixels, which is what we did here, does that include any padding that we might have? And does it include the size of any border that we might have? Right? And that's what the box sizing property is all about. Right? So right now we don't have any padding or any uh, borders. Let's actually see what happens once we start adding padding or a border here. Right? So to see the difference, Let's make the first box um, the default value. So just, we don't have to specify that because it's already the default, but I wanna, I wanna be clear about what the value is for each box. So the first one has content box and we're gonna give the second box um, the value border box, right? These are the two values that you can have for box sizing. Okay, now if we do this and I refresh, nothing will change. So this alone does not do, really do anything. This property starts becoming important. Uh, box sizing starts becoming important once we start adding padding and a border. So let's actually do that now. Let's actually add padding to both boxes of 50 pixels, right? On all sides, padding 50 pixels, right? So now let's pay attention and see what happens. If I refresh now, let me close out of here for now. If I refresh, you can see that the first box actually increases in total size and the second box actually stays the same. So the, the box with the default value increased in size once I, once I added padding and the second box stayed the same size, right? Or total size. So let's actually look at the box model to see what happened here, um, right? So box one, the one that increased in size, let's see what happened. So here we can see the box model. So we can see that it still has a, a content box that is 700 by 300, which is the width and height that we set here, right? And then we added padding. And what happens in the default case, the padding gets added on top of that, right? So it's in addition to the 700 and 300 pixels that we set with the, with the width and height properties. In addition to that, we get the padding. It's different for box two. Box two has border box. So now we can see that the content box is actually not 700 by 300 anymore. It's now 600 by 200. And the reason for that is because now the padding is actually um, taking part of that overall size, right? So um, what happens here is that when you set a height or width when with border box, that's, that's gonna be the total size. That's gonna be the total width. So if you add padding, the padding will not get added on top of that. It will be included in that total width and height, right? That's a little bit tricky. That's why it's the most difficult property in CSS. But 
this is actually more intuitive, right? Because when you set a height or width, you expect that to be the total size of the element. So if you have any padding, you, you know, you expect that to be included in that total width or height, right? In the default situation, it's actually, it's actually confusing because if you set a height or width and then you also have padding, well, the padding gets added on top of that. So you actually have more, the total size is more. Right, so if you look at the box model for the first box, you can see that the total width, for example, if we just look at the width, well, we have 700, that's the content box. And then we also have padding on the left and right side of 50 pixels both, right? So you get 800 pixels of width, that's the total width, which is different from the width that we set here. Right, so that's confusing. However, for box two, we set a total width of 700. And if we look here, the total width, we have 600, right? The browser automatically adjusts the content box to 600. And then we have 50 on both sides. So the total width is indeed 700. So this is in line with our intuition. And let's actually see what happens once we also add a border. So let's say border, uh, 30 pixels, solid, black, right? So we're gonna add the same border of 30 pixels to both boxes. And let's see what happens, right? This is what we have. Now I'm gonna refresh. And you can see when I do that, the first box, again, became a little bit bigger in size, in total size. And the second box stayed the same size, right? So the reason for that is the same as with the padding. So if we look at the uh, box model here, you can see for the first box that has the default value of content box, it still has this 700 by 300 for the content box. And then we added padding. The padding is not included. Right, so it gets added on top of that, right? So it became bigger. And then we added a border and the border is also not included in that. So it gets added on top of that, right? So the total size has now increased again, right? So the total width here, for example, we can calculate it. So we have 700 pixels of width for the content box. Then for the, you could say the padding box, we have another 50 on both sides, that's 800. And then we have 30 pixels on both sides for the border. That's going to be 860 pixels in total width. But we set 700 pixels of width here, right? So this is confusing in practice because when I set a width of 700 pixels, I kind of expect that to be the total width, right? But in fact, we can see here that it's actually not, it's actually 860 pixels. And that's why people tend to change the box sizing property to border box. Because if we now look at box two, we can calculate that the total width here is still the width that we set here, which is in line with our intuition. We expect this to be the total width, right? So we set a width of 700 pixels here. And here we can see now the browser has automatically changed the size of the content box again to accommodate the, the uh, size of the border that we added and also the size of the padding that we added because the width here is 550 pixels, right? If you add 50 and 50 on that, that's 650, that's 650, that's, that's 640, sorry. And then we have uh, two times 30, which is 640 plus 60 is, is 700 indeed, right? So the total width here is 700, right? Which is the exact width that we also set here. So this is working as we would expect. The same goes for the height, by the way, right? So this is typically why people do that with the, the reset, right? So you select all elements. We typically want to remove the margin and the padding. And then also we want to change the box sizing from content box, which is the default to border box, right? The name already says it, border box. So when you set a height or width, you're basically setting the size of the border box, right? Because when you say uh, width 700 pixels, well, what exactly in this box model should be 700 pixels? The content box, should that be 700 pixels? And that's actually the default. Right? The content box should be 700 pixels. That's why it's the, that's why the value is also called content box. Um, so then when you add padding or a border, that gets, that, that gets added on top of that, which is confusing because then the total differs from what you set in height and width, right? So with border box, when you set a height or width, well, the width of what exactly? Well, the border box. So everything up until including the border should be 700 pixels or should be uh, 300 pixels in height. Now, by the way, margin is not really uh, part of the element itself. So that's why we don't have margin box, for example. Margin is more about space between elements.
By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real-world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.